Thanks for joining us and welcome to Open Infra Live, the Open Infra Foundation's hour-long interactive show um, sharing production case studies, open source demos, industry conversations, and the latest updates from the global open infrastructure community. We are live here on Thursdays at 14 UTC, streaming on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. My name is Kendall Nelson from the Open Infra Foundation, and I'll be your host for today's episode. Like I mentioned, we're streaming live, so we'll be saving some time at the end of the episode for Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout uh, the episode on anybody's topics, um, please feel free to drop questions in the comments section throughout the show, and we'll answer as many as we can at the end. First, I want to give a huge thanks to the Open Infra Foundation members who make um, the Open Infra Live series and so much more, like today's release that we'll be talking about possible. Um, and today we're going to be talking about OpenStack Z, which is the 26th uh, version uh, that was actually released only yesterday. So we have some awesome guests today um, that I will uh, introduce in a moment here. But uh, first, data. Who doesn't love data, right? <laughs> so um, the 26th release, uh, OpenStack Z, will introduce 15,500 changes. We really couldn't do it without our amazing community. So 710 con uh, contributors this release from 140 different organizations, which is awesome diversity. And even better is the 44 countries that get represented by those 710 contributors across the 27 weeks that we worked on this release. So Super, super excited um, to share everything that happened in Zed with you today. Um, but obviously, we love data, so let's let's keep going. <laughs> um, over the last twelve years and twenty six releases, we've seen insane amounts of growth of OpenStack usage. So right now, um, we just uh, pulled data from our our most recent user survey, which shows that there are over 40 million cores in production, which is 166% growth since 2020 even, let alone the 12 years that we've been working together as a community. Um, but since 2012, our community has merged over 576,000 changes from over 8,900 contributors. It's crazy how global our community is and enormous. Um, and we couldn't do it without our sponsors, like I said before. Um, so we can call out global and growing users of OpenStack like Bloomberg and Walmart, CERN, who doesn't love CERN? I love a good science experiment. Um, OVH Cloud, Line, Workday, China Unicom, China Mobile, the list goes on and on. So many different kinds of users um, from all different industries. So it's very cool to see all the applications and uses of OpenStack. So moving on, we have a, an updated map here. Um, OpenStack is obviously a, a conglomeration of a lot of services for different um services. <laughs> it's a, a very big, complicated, uh, sometimes uh, project. So we have updated our OpenStack map to remove um, some projects that have uh, retired. And we actually have added one of the projects that we'll be talking about later today, the uh, um, Venus project. So we're hopeful that we'll be able to add more in the future, but we, we do our best to keep this up to date so people can have a nice overview of what an OpenStack cloud could look like um, and all the different options of services available. So first up today, we have the Manila project um, and we have the PTL, actually, Carlos Silva, to tell us about what happened in Manila during Zed. Take it away. Thank you, Kendall. Yeah, hello, I'm Carlos. I'm the current PTL for OpenStack Manila, the OpenStack shared file system as a service. And today I walk you through the highlights of Manila during the Zed cycle, and we'll share some of our plans for the 23.1, also known as Antelope cycle. So, Starting with some highlights from Zed, um, the first one, 
to mention is that Manila reached feature parity between the native client and OpenStack client. And now users and administrators are able to use OpenStack share commands to communicate with Manila. The only missing bit is the API micro, micro version auto negotiation. And this means that to use the release, uh, this release of the OpenStack client with an older shared file system API service, users will need to set the API version in their environment. This could be done by cloud, uh, configuring the cloud config, specifying the shared file systems API version or via shell uh, environment using the US shared API version or even via uh, CLI override. Uh, after this last bit is covered, we intend to add a deprecation warning to the native Manila client commands. And uh, last on, the, on this topic, I would like to thank all of the incredible Manila contributors for this achievement. It's a long time since we first started this effort and it's great to see the results we managed to achieve. Another feature to be consumed, uh, available to be consumed after the Z release is the metadata API uh, for shared snapshots. While creating snapshots, now it's possible to specify metadata. This is a recently introduced feature featuring Manila, but the workflow might already be known to Manila consumers. It works in a similar way as the uh, Manila shares metadata and administra administrators are able to update uh, snapshots with some metadata keys and values and delete the metadata and filter the snapshots that contain specific metadata. And we have also improved scalability with this FFS and FS driver. This FFS and NFS driver received a couple of updates in order to enhance scalability. The NFS cluster protocol helper has been added to allow users to consume and export CFS shares over a clustered NFS gateway. This presents many advantages since the operator no longer needs to maintain their own instance of NFS Ganesha, a part of the Ceph cluster. For this, we now communicate with Ceph manager using the NFS plugin. For new driver additions, we have a new driver that was uh, wedded to Manila, and deployers are now able to use their MacroSan storage systems through the recently added MacroSan driver in Manila. If you want to check the availability of features, please check the support matrix that's linked on these slides. And over the Z cycle, we have also um, seen some replication enhancements for the NetApp driver. And the NetApp on tap driver for Manila is now doing more accurate checks to determine if a replica is in sync with uh, their parent share or not. And please check the release notes for more information on this. Another big update for Manila was that they are back defaults of the shared file system serve as a service Manila APIs have been updated to remove uh, system scope personas. This is being done in concert with other OpenStack services and in reaction to operator feedback that we use, uh, that the use of the system scope introduces backward compatibilities in existing workflows. The new defaults support the use of scope. However, no back rule by default includes, includes the system scope. At this time, we do not recommend the use of system scoped personas to interact with the shared file systems as a service API and because it's largely untested. And last but not least, on the Z-Cycle highlights, we have managed to tackle a bunch of bugs. And uh, there are also some other upgrade uh, bits. So you can check all of those updates in the release notes that's linked on this uh, deck. And for 23.1, also known as Antelope, uh, there are some maintained updates for us. Uh, the first one would be the uh, OpenStack client updates, which is getting the version auto negotiation working so we can add the deprecation warning to our native client. Also covering features on Manila UI to get closer to feature parity since Manila UI is falling a bit behind of uh, the features we currently can provide uh, to, uh, to consumers. Adding more coverage to the OpenStack SDK, continuing the migration we have been uh, doing uh, from root web to PrivSap, get more Tempest test coverage for our back, uh, since we currently have some testing uh, and a job for the GHSS pause mode, uh, but we want to get more testing for uh, the GHSS true. If you'd like to hear more uh, about those plans or even bring up your own, we will be glad to have you in, the, in our PTG sessions. So please, uh, if you have some, or if you would like to give some feedback, we will also have a, one operator hour. So feel free to join us. And uh, if you want to add your topics to the PTG planning either pad linked above. So yeah, 
uh, that's the update from Manila. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Carlos. Yes. Uh, it's awesome to see all of the hardware enablement that's happening in Manila, adding new drivers and this and that. Um, uh, speaking of hardware enablement, <laughs> um, next up, we actually have the Ironic Project and the newly elected PTL, Jay Faulkner. Hey, thank you so much, Kendall. And uh, that sounds exciting for Manila. I'll look forward to seeing that in the world. Um, so first of all, these updates are usually like celebratory things because we got something done. But uh, I, I have the sad news of being able to present uh, that uh, we're going to be honoring Ilya Tingoff with this OpenStack release of Zed. Uh, he was a longtime ironic contributor. We've dedicated the release to his memory. Um, to be specific with Ironic, um, Ilya put a lot of hard work in making Sushi happen, which is the library that Ironic provides for um, for communication with the Redfish hardware standard. And uh, if you're using any of those drivers, you owe a debt of thanks to Ilya. And that's why we are going to honor him with this Zed release. And uh, so we got the sad stuff out of the way. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what we've done during the release. Um, so first of all, just, just a few numbers to sort of talk about. Um, this is the 18th release of OpenStack containing Ironic. Uh, we were first incubated in Ice House and we're all the way through to Zed. Uh, Ironic have 43 different contributors across all our projects. And uh, one thing I wanted to take the opportunity to plug here is our intermediate cycle bug fix releases. We push a release every two months in the cycle uh, even though most OpenStack projects don't, because we do have some Ironic users who like using Ironic standalone, um, such as our integration with Metal 3. So this is sort of a fun thing. If you're someone who's using or thinking about using Ironic standalone, you can also check out one of our bug fix releases and become one of the over 6,000 people who've consumed them since the Zed cycle started. But let's, let's talk about what we've done. Uh, the first thing, and this is... Uh, this is sort of a not an endpoint, but a pretty far milestone in a journey we've been making for a while where um, we have support for self-service bare metal as a service. Um, and what that means is Ironic traditionally was an administrative API used by administrators and by Nova to provision servers. And we're slowly moving that toward being an API that can be exposed to, to more people, to more projects and have some multi-tenant awareness. And Along that way, we added the uh, project scope manager role to our RBAC model. Um, project scoped admins and managers can create and delete nodes, um, which can be tagged with ownership to their project. And uh, when you provision a node as a member, Ironic can be configured to automatically mark that node as leased by that project. Um, these are all sort of important things for reflecting the state of who has what checked out in a multi-tenant ironic world. And, and this is really exciting. I can't wait to see what operators are able to do with this in the real world. Um, the other thing, and and the, the next thing on this slide, and, and I'll say that this is uh, sort of a constant for ironic. There, This is this sort of work is never done that uh, we do in the background to make hardware work seamlessly when provisioning. Um, in this case, a few highlights that I um, found specifically were um, we've got some more support for SNMP controlled PDUs. Um, these are particularly good for development, but we do have some people who use those in production for power control. Um, we've got some security enhancement, mainly certificate validation work um, and SSL for um, some of our BMC backends. Um, and some of that security work also includes making it so that if you change the password on a Redfish BMC that you're ironic connection uh, is now able to figure that out and keep access going. Um, so so this is pretty exciting. And, and I'm just I just pulled out a few things here, but we're always making the hardware support better. And Ironic really appreciates our hardware partners who help test these features in CI with the real hardware and uh, help us develop them. Um, and and this is another one where we're constantly working on this. This is constantly at top of mind for uh, ironic developers and that sort of operator quality of life. So there's a few things here we've done to try to make your life better if you're running OpenStack Ironic. Um, you can now take um, our configuration where you can set specific kernel command line options based on your environment and set those per node. You can now actually template in the default values there. So. If you've ever had to add a, a string to make make a Linux installer boot or a, one of our RAM disk agents boot, 
you'll see that this is going to make it a lot easier to do that sort of tweaking. Um, we added a new denial of service prevention mechanism, which um, can be configured to limit concurrent deployments and cleaning to prevent a um, a disgruntled user, a disgruntled user, admin with access, or a malicious user from chewing through all your hardware really quickly. Um, that comes out of the box configured with very high limits. If this is a feature you're concerned in, I strongly recommend you go read the release notes and make sure you tune that to a value that makes sense for your environment. Um, otherwise, the limits are high enough, probably is not going to impact your day-to-day -day use. Um, another one is our Kickstart driver, which allows you to, instead of deploying an image, you can deploy a Kickstart installer. Um, it's been greatly improved. We're now testing parts of it in CI and we support deploying directly from a repository instead of having to use an image um, directly from there. So that, that's pretty exciting as well. Um, and uh, sort of the final thing we're calling out here, and there's a lot of enhancements around this area. I sort of pulled one out, but um, ironic cleaning can now be configured to skip devices. So this means if you have a persistent um, bare metal machine that has a lot of data on it. You don't want that data to be erased, but you want to make sure you can clear off the operating system and prepare it for the next install. We support that. And uh, you can sort of see that we're we, we're trying to, to reach for both sides of the spectrum, the people who need that enhanced support for a single tenant and some people who need that multi-tenant support. So we're trying to make it work for everyone. Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about in terms of highlights are we've imp made some improvements for those standalone users I spoke of before. Um, Ironic now supports controlling a DNS, DNS mask DN, DHCP server directly. Um, before this, you always, even if you were using Ironic and standalone, needed to deploy a Neutron or DHCP server of your own. Now Ironic's happy to manage that if you're using a standalone. Um, as I mentioned before, we did release two bug fix releases at the two and four month mark of the Z cycle, um, given the standalone users some early access, some of the features we've talked about. Uh, and we've also taken some time with those Kickstart driver improvements to document how to use it if you're a standalone user. So that's that's pretty exciting if you're someone who's interested in the hardware provisioning side but is not looking for a whole cloud stack. Um, so finally, we have to kind of talk about things that we removed and deprecated. Sometimes you've got to, um, to prune the tree back a little bit to make sure that we're able to support things um, long term. And uh, I'm just gonna, gonna reference a few of these. We had some things that were deprecated and some things that have been deprecated that have now been removed. So when you're upgrading your Ironic installation, think about this. Um, we've deprecated support for Syslinux based bootloaders. That includes ISO Linux and Pixie Linux. These are um, basically becoming unsupported by upstream. They haven't been touched since 2019 and they only see BIOS methods booting. Um, and so what this also means is that some of our support for legacy style BIOS booting is gonna have to go away with those tools um, going out of support. And that means that if you want to use um, legacy style BIOS booting with virtual media, you're not gonna be able to do that for very long as we've deprecated that in Zed. Um, some things that we previously deprecated that we've now removed, um, we no longer support instance network booting. So to be clear about what that is, Ironic used to support a feature where after you deploy an instance, you're able to continue Pixie booting into the operating system you've deployed onto that node. That feature has been removed. And now when you provision machines with Ironic, they're always going to be configured to support local boot. And this was already our recommended and default configuration. So unless you specifically ever turned on or relied on this feature, it's not something you have to worry about. Um, one of the big reasons that existed was actually support for trusted boot. But with the removal of instance network booting, we are gonna remove trusted boot. And again, this isn't to be confused with things like UEFI secure boot or similar technologies. This is a very specific trust, um, trust trusted boot implementation. Um, I'll note that we've got some of the folks here who have slides on their topics for PTG or what's coming up next. With Ironic, we haven't quite nailed that down yet, but I expect next cycle will continue to focus heavily on operator quality of life um, and particularly making sure our failure scenarios around conductors are improved greatly. But uh, thank you very much and uh, hope to see you around if you've got any questions. Thank you so much for all of that information. It's a, a really sad open sack will feel the loss of Ilya. So dedicating the release to him, I think was a, a good gesture. We, we appreciate all of the effort and work he put in and 
um, we'll, we'll miss him for sure. Um, so our uh, next topic, uh, next awesome OpenStack service is Nova. And we have Sylvain, the PTL here to talk about that. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks, Kendall. So uh, very briefly, thanks for joining us. Um, so next slide, please. Um, before discussing about the features that we implemented for that specific cycle, a few a few numbers. Um, I guess you'll be interested in knowing about how many blueprints we merged. So as you can see, we merged uh, six uh, blueprints from uh, 14 that were accepted. To be clear, the other ones were either not having uh, new changes from the owners, or we also had some, some problems uh, for them. So basically, it was not a, a review issue. It was more like uh, the point that uh, some, some changes were needed some, some, some more time. So uh, about the bugs, I also looked at Gerrit, uh, how many bug fixes uh, we merged during this cycle. Uh, as you can see, 45. And I also looked at Gerrit uh, for the previous release, which was, no, which was Yoga. And as you can see, we merged more bug fixes. So that's actually very good, I think. Also, maybe you don't know, but um, every week, someone from the Nova community tries to look at the new bug reports that are created. Uh, at the at the at the first at the first uh, at the first week of Z, we are having twenty eight of entry edge bug reports, and thanks uh, from all the folks that were looking at them every week. At the end of the cycle, we only have five of them. So that doesn't mean that we merge only a few a few bugs. No, it just means that when you create a bug report by Nova, you're pretty sure that every week we look at it. And either we say to you, actually, you need to provide more, more points, or basically we say, OK, it's valid. So at least you know whether what you ask for Nova was OK or not. So if you think uh, if you if you find a problem with nova just provide a bug report and we look at that thanks as you can see uh, even if some contributors uh, haven't provided merge uh, haven't provided implementation for uh, for z we have the same number of of contributors and as i wrote also thanks folks that uh, thanks thanks nova folks because thanks to you, as you see, the, the metrics were very good for, for Z. Next cycle, net, net, sorry, next slide, please. So uh, what we did for what we did for Z, as you can see, one of them, uh, one of them was um, was for being able uh, to have Nova supporting new virtual IOMU devices. So what you can what you can do now is to is to be able when you create an instance to ask by a flavor or by image to have a, a virtual IMU device and basically the guest will have it. Also, um, Windows uh, Windows instances could have better behavior because now uh, we use a new enlightenments. From, uh, from Hyper-V. Um, maybe you also, uh, maybe, you also maybe you already know, in Yoga, uh, it was possible to create an instance that was using VDPA port, VDP ports, sorry. Now with Z, eventually, it's possible to live migrate that specific instance that will all plug, that will all plug the VDPA port, or suspend the instance, which was not possible before, or to attach or detach the VDPA port. We also merged um, something which is nice. When you rebuild, 
it's not possible to rebuild a BAV instance. What we name a BAV instance is basically an instance having a volume attached as a root disk. No, you can basically rebuild it, and it will basically ask Cinder to reimage the to reimage the volume. Um, no, you can also unshelve an instance by passing a new parameter, which is basically a host. And eventually, also, no, it's no longer possible to generate a key pair because we had problems with some OSs. So we prefer to deprecate and to stop supporting to generate the key pairs. You can only import a public key by now. Next slide, please. So um, we will be discussing at the PTG, which is in two weeks, about a few topics. I wrote a few of them. We will be also discussing about other topics that are not here, but you know. But as you see, at least uh, what I would like to discuss is about some sustainability efforts that we could work for this cycle. Uh, at least, for example, if it will be possible to modify a CPU state, like for example, having a core to pass offline, if it will, see, if it will be also possible to integrate uh, Scaffrand, you probably, uh, you maybe haven't seen Scaffrand, the Scaffrand project uh, at some Berlin summit that we had six months before. Uh, it will be providing power metrics from host and for the instance. But that's not only on the only topic that we'll be discussing. Um, we really want to help Ironic about the problems they have when Nova computes are going down. Uh, we also want to continue to work on the next steps for the TC effort upstream about secure airbag. Hopefully, we could be starting phase three. We don't know yet. We still need to discuss about uh, what will be the next uh, what will be the next steps. We'll also want to discuss how to basically, just to be clear, uh, by yoga, you haven't seen it, but now we have PCI devices inventories in placement API. By Antelope, what we'd like to have is to have the scheduler asking placement for basically scheduling instances, asking for PCI devices. And we'll also be wanting to discuss about a few network related uh, features like FQDNs, metadata, multiple MT MTUs for guests, and so on. Also, um, PTG is not only for discussing about features, PTG is also for discussing about other stuff like you see. As a PTL, I really want to see how we could help contributors to join us, because we know that Nova is a is a is a huge is a huge problem. But if we can help contributors to ramp up, it will be definitely nice. Um, also, last point: that's the first PTG that will have some specific time slots with operators. So uh, let me discuss that next slide, please. So. Um, as you see, uh, we have sessions in between Tuesday and Friday in two weeks from now. But if you are an operator and you really want to discuss with the Nova community, you are more, more than welcome to attend our sessions because we basically have two of those, one on Tuesday and one on Wednesday. You can find the logistics in Detailpad or you can also look at the PTG schedule. But by the way, Kandal, we discuss about the PTG at the end of the at the end of the of the presentation. So thanks, thanks, folks. If you have questions, just uh, just ping me on the just ping me. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Solan. Uh, I, we will have time for questions at the end. Um, so if you have any, drop them in your chats. Otherwise, uh, all of the uh, project representatives have tried to include uh, their IRC nicknames, if they have those for contact. And there's always the, the public mailing list as well. So we look forward to your questions. Um, 
Thank you. <laughs> uh, next up, we have the Neutron Project and Laos to tell us about the Z improvements um, that happened in Neutron. Yeah, thank you very much, Kendall. So, hello everybody. I'm Lajos Katona. I was the PTL of Neutron in the in the last two cycles. <clears throat> and uh, first of all, I would like to use this opportunity to say thank you for for everybody who participated in this uh, in this release and of course the last few dozens. <laughs> uh, we we really en encourage everybody to to participate in our weekly meeting on IRC or just come and ask on on the Neutron channel. Or, uh, or write a mail to the mail list. We, we try to answer every every question or, or just file a bug or jump into the PTG, of course, as, as uh, Sylvan and, and uh, the guys previously also mentioned that uh, the PTG is a really good opportunity to, to meet with the team and, and discuss uh, any questions which you, which you have. Yeah, so let's go to see what, uh, what interesting things happened in in, in that cycle. <clears throat> uh, I would like to first uh, highlight that uh, we have again uh, a Neutron Stadium project back from uh, retirement. This time it's a uh, Neutron Fire was a service. Uh, uh, a team jumped in and they they uh, willing to maintain this project. And actually, they they would like to make it compatible with with OVM. So, so it's it's really good news that uh, we have life uh, in these in these uh, old projects, and uh, and these are still useful for for uh, for uh, customers. Uh, after that, I would like to highlight uh, two news interesting news from, from OVN. So from Z, OVN supports uh, minimum bandwidth QoS rule and, and the placement allocation for it. So it's, uh, it's now not just SRI OV, OVS, but uh, you can use uh, uh, placement allocation for, for QoS uh, ports with QoS uh, policy with, with OVN. Uh, and uh, from Z, uh, OVN uh, support bare metal provisioning. Uh, with uh, with OVN's built-in DHCP server for for IPv4 uh, uh, addresses, so it's uh, it, it's another possibility for you to to use uh, your your deployments for your users. <clears throat> Some uh, L3 news: we have uh, we have uh, NDP proxy for uh, L3 routers in in Neutron. That. Uh, that's actually interesting uh, IPv6 feature, and uh, uh, it, it can be useful to, to replace the IPv6 prefix delegation feature in, in Newton. Uh, sadly, IPv6 prefix delegation is not maintained, and uh, actually we we set it uh, deprecated in the in the Z cycle because because of uh, lack of uh, testing, lack of uh, and and maintain the backend for it. So so please check NDP proxy if you if you need some some IPv6 feature like that. <clears throat> uh, from Z you can use uh, port ranges for floating IP port forwarding API. So that uh, makes uh, your life uh, much easier if you if you would like to have uh, port for port forwarding uh, for your floating IPs. Uh, for QoS, we have uh, we have a new rule type, uh, packet per second. That uh, that's uh, again a kind of a, a trend. So we have uh, we have now a new QoS rule type in in every every cycle. Uh, this one actually this uh, packet per second that's for OVS. So if you if you use OVS driver, you can you can check out this uh, this new rule type. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to mention here a few things which are not really features, but uh, but anyway, we, we worked on it and it, it will be uh, useful in the in the future. Uh, so it seems that we finished the SQL Alchemy 2 uh, adoption, uh, not just in Neutron, but in, in the Stadium projects also. So, so I hope that... Uh, that, that will make uh, our projects more future proof. And uh, actually, I 
just would like to mention here a, a sad news and that uh, uh, perhaps will not be really surprising for you uh, that uh, Linux bridge driver is, is not maintained. So we decided in the last PTG that uh, we we create a new flag in the in the config and that we mark uh, unsupported not maintain the features in in uh, neutron tree with with experimental uh, flag that's actually a config option so if you would like to use a linux bridge driver you have to explicitly say in your config that hey i i know that this is experimental but i want to use this so that uh, actually we have no really maintainers for it. There was no contributor for Linux bridge driver in the last cycles. Uh, the CI is uh, lacking resources. So actually there is nobody to, to fix uh, Linux bridge uh, bugs. So it's a good opportunity to, if, if, you, if you would like to use this driver, Linux bridge driver, please come and, and uh, we are open to, to help you with, uh, with uh, uh, experience and, uh, and uh, advices and, and even even resources but uh, but uh, come and, and uh, try to maintain it if you if you really need this driver <clears throat> uh, yeah perhaps I I continue the the bad habit with uh, with, with data but I, I I try to be short with this so just a few things from from the life of uh, neutron team so so we discussed the uh, little more than than 13 RFEs, RFEs for request for enhancement. That's a lightweight uh, feature pro feature proposal, uh, and uh, and for some we even requested the author to to push a specification if if the feature was uh, something more uh, uh, difficult. So so if you if you have anything in mind uh, and it it seems much more difficult than a bug please come and and uh, and and uh, file a, um, an rfe on the on the launchpad so it's basically a bug with a with a tag rfe and we discuss that uh, during the drivers meeting we have every week a drivers meeting where we when we discuss these uh, proposals we we reviewed and and accepted uh, uh, five specifications we have more under review for the for the coming cycles uh, we also worked on the secure airbuck uh, thing in this cycle. So based on the user feedback, we we, we adopted as as it was also mentioned by by uh, uh, Sylvan and, and Carlos. So it uh, it was also a, a job for us. <clears throat> And uh, and we have the the never-ending story of of uh, CI rationalization and and uh, and improvement. So, but that uh, that's just the background of what what we are doing. <laughs> we are not uh, reviewing your features. Yeah, perhaps a few words uh, for what we are planning for the for the next cycle. Mm, yeah, so. So as uh, as you heard, we will have the the PTG in two weeks. Please come and uh, and uh, you can you can find the Etherpad of, of Neutron if you if you visit the uh, open the PTG uh, uh, site. So so please check the Etherpad. Uh, add any any lines if you would like to discuss something or or just uh, jump in then. And uh, we would we we can discuss your your questions. Actually, we have a few interesting topics already, which uh, which uh, can be useful for for the next cycles. Uh, so it, it seems that the Neutron will work on this uh, uh, quota class implementation, which which already done more or less with with Nova and Cinder. So we we continue with with their. Uh, experiences to to have this uh, feature also in neutron uh, there will be discussions for for dns improvements that uh, 
that's an interesting topic in the in the last cycles and it's uh, it's it's useful for for everybody not just for uh, big but but small uh, deployments uh, and edge sites also and uh, and actually we will discuss or, or uh, we, we, we plan to work on the uh, migration from uh, Python Neutron client. <clears throat> Actually, we, we de deprecated the, the CLI part of Python Neutron client and, and we use Python OpenStack client, but uh, the Python bindings are still uh, there in Python Neutron client. And uh, our plan is to, to move that totally and deprecate that also in the future. I don't know when. <laughs> And, and use uh, OpenStack SDK instead of that. So a lot of projects still uh, use the bindings from Python Neutron client like Heat, uh, Horizon, I, I think Nova also, and, and perhaps there's others. And uh, we would like to start at least in this cycle to, to move these projects uh, and then uh, make them use uh, OpenStack SDK. Um, yeah, that's it from me. Thanks for your attention. Lots of work to be done, but lots of things got accomplished too. So it's awesome to see uh, everything that Neutron did during Zed and will continue during Antelope. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye. Um, so next up, we have the uh, Skyline project, which is actually a, a newer service in OpenStack. It's a, a modern dashboard um, that we're working on getting in place to... Um, to replace Horizon, actually, but at this point, it's uh, listed as uh, an emerging technology by the technical committee. So it's not quite what, ready to use in production yet, but it is full of features already and ready for testing and feedback and more. Um, I'll let I'll let Woo -hoo, uh, dive into everything that they accomplished in in Zed. Okay. Uh... Could you um, back to last page? Okay. Uh, um, uh, I'm from China. Uh, my name is Wen Sheng, and uh, uh, thanks you, thank you all. Uh, now Skyline had the first official uh, version release in Z. Uh, very exciting. At the very beginning, Skyline is very, very strange to OpenStack. Uh, it uses async IO, use some module. Uh, use uh, multiple uh, modules in one repo. Uh, use poetry rather than pipe, and uh, mm, it also didn't use uh, the Oslo libraries. Uh, it's hard to say good or bad. It's just a different. Different means not simple. Uh, so we reflect and reflect, and finally, it uh, seems it looks like. Mm, other uh, OpenStack modules. Okay, so um, it grew up from a young nine-color deer to adult one. Uh, and um, next page. Okay, thanks. Uh, this is the uh, new logo. Uh, thank, thanks for the designer. Uh, and uh, in that we support OpenStack uh, Trim and Plus. Uh, we integration with the required OpenStack module is uh, Keystones, uh, Nova, Neutron, Glance. Without this, you cannot use Skyline. And uh, it also supports optional uh, OpenStack module like Cinder, Octavia, Manila, uh, Ironic, Heat, Zen, Magnum, and Chop. Uh, you can enable or disable with the configuration. And uh, we also support integration with the PROM API. Uh, we support open ID SSO logins uh, and uh, we support other system, uh, system uh, config related APIs for Scalan. Uh, Scalan uh, separate to two paths, uh, a console and uh, an API server. Uh, the console is uh, mm, is right by React, uh, simple React without uh, Node.js. It's very simple, 
and uh, uh, the API server is uh, a fast API async async uh, um, APIs, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, we removed the, the adapter layers uh, in Horizon uh, and uh, make it make it, uh, um, uh, it could be uh, more simple and uh, uh, more light. Okay, uh, next page. Uh, thanks. And uh, for the plans, uh, thanks uh, very much for our developers and uh, uh, all the users. Uh, especially, we thanks for the Toki contributors for us. Uh, they compute the Zen, Magnum, and Chov uh, modules. And uh, um, in next uh, uh, release, we will uh, do the Cola Ansible integration. Maybe also have the uh, Helm chat. Uh, maybe, maybe not. And uh, we uh, want to do some refactor for uh, the uh, Scala Concert. Uh, make it uh, um, make it uh, uh, more easier to develop uh, for other OpenStack module support. Uh, like Sahara or others. And uh, we also will do some stress testing uh, different with Horizon. Uh, Horizon is very, very successful and uh, mm, Skyline is, uh, uh, we still <laughs> uh, move go on. And uh, uh, I, I think uh, mm, maybe uh, the more user, the more contributor, uh, and uh, the better uh, Skyline can achieve. Mm. And uh, uh, welcome for uh, all of the contributors, welcome for all of the users. Uh, every comment is uh, uh, help for us. And uh, thank you all, that's all from me, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really exciting to see this new uh, uh, dashboard, and we're excited to see when it gets uh, moved out of the emerging technology phase. It'll be really, really exciting. So if there, you have any feedback after you go um, and play around with the Skyline dashboard, please share it with the team. I'm sure they would love all the feedback that they can get. Um, awesome. So next up today, we have the Venus project, which is kind of your one-stop shop for logging. It's also a new service um, in OpenStack, but it is, it's been fully released. And it was one of the projects that we added to that OpenStack map back at the very beginning of our, our show today, if you remember that. So I will let uh, Lie take it away for Venus uh, and Zed. Thank you. <clears throat> And hello everyone, I'm Pang Li Ye. I'm from Eastbound, China. It's a pleasure to introduce the project Venus. Uh, you let go the need to go retrieval, storage, and analysis uh, logs on the OpenStack platform. We developed the OpenStack log management model Venus, which provides, which provides a one-step solution for log collection, cleaning, indexing, analysis, alarm, visualization, report generation, and other requirements to help operator and maintainer quickly solve retrieval problems. <clears throat> that is the first release of the Venus. The accomplishment of Venus in that is as follows. It supports developing via uh, DV stock or classable. Where it is deployed, it can be assessed and used in Horizon project. <clears throat> we add the Horizon Display plugin for Venus that named Venus dashboard. We can choose whether to deploy it or not. It supports multi-dimensional retrieval or logs or logs or logs of stack uh, components such as uh, host level. Uh, service, tenant, request ID, and so on. <clears throat> uh, we add uh, some operation and uh, 
maintenance was page such as the retention time row ES data. Uh, the, back the background task will be automatically executed according to the config setting <coughs> on the page. We add Venus API document to OpenStack document so that users can be better integrated with the, the Venus project. Uh, we, we have also developed some other features, such as developed the uh, program to show some typical error statistics uh, through the page, such as uh, MariaDB connection errors, RabbitMQ connection errors, and uh, other errors. Uh, next page. Um, uh, the highlight for Antelope. Um, in Antelope, we will focus more on error log discovery and uh, analysis. Uh, scenario log analysis. Get the error log model for each. Uh, get the error, error log model for uh, each model and form them into templates so that it can be prompt when these errors occur. Anomaly detection logs. Uh, algorithms based on rows, uh, such as regular expressions, keyword width, and AC auto data, <coughs> auto, automata are used to uh, realize automatic discovery of cloud platform error logs. Um, that's all. Welcome to Venus and looking forward to your um, com comments and suggestions for the project. Uh, my spoken English is poor. If you have any questions about Venus, uh, please e email me at any time. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, that that was a lot of information. <laughs> um, lots of things happening in Venus. Uh, and obviously, everybody is going to be moving on to the next release, Antelope. So there's a lot of work to still be done. Thank you so much, um, Lie, for uh, sharing all these updates today. Um, so unfortunately, our, our next presenter wasn't able to um, be here today. So I'll just kind of give a, a little bit of an overview and we will be sharing these slides after the show as well. So any links that uh, people provided in their slides, you'll be able to access and uh, look over what, um, what all we covered here today. So the interoperability working group um, sets a, a base number of requirements, um, capabilities, code, um, and tests that have to pass um, to be OpenStack compatible. So this is something that uh, a lot of our vendor companies are really interested in. Um, but the number one ask from the group is that they uh, they need help because uh, this is like a, an add-on to the regular OpenStack services, um, kind of a, a different sort of group of people. Um, and the... It, there's a lot of things that need to be maintained. Um, so if you're interested in getting involved, please contact Martin Kopek. He wasn't able to be here today, but uh, we appreciate everything he put together for us. Um, and like I said before, the, the slides will be available, so you'll be able to read through everything we just quickly tapped through. Um, but as just about everybody mentioned here today, the project team's gathering is happening in less than two weeks now. Crazy. <laughs> it It's a virtual event and it's um, free to attend. I do really want to encourage all operators watching this stream to attend, particularly those specific operator sessions that uh, Sylvain uh, mentioned during his session or during his uh, Nova update. So, um, all of like anybody involved in in any project or OpenStack in general, there are definitely going to be things that we would love your feedback on, and you can influence the the future of OpenStack. Um, so come and represent your use case, give feedback, and uh, let's let's forge ahead into Antelope, and and <laughs> we uh, look to look forward to seeing you all there. 
Um, so I think we're just about out of time today. Um, I don't know that we got um, a whole lot of questions, but everybody is available offline um, on the project mailing list. Otherwise, all of the, the PTLs are available. Please go check out the Zed release. We all worked so hard on it and uh, we're, we're very proud of what we've accomplished. Um, if you have an idea for a future episode of Open Info Live, we definitely want to hear from you. Submit your ideas at ideas.openinforlive um, or dot .openinfra live, <laughs> And maybe we'll see you here on a future show. Thanks again to today's guests and we'll see you all on the next Open Info Live. Thank you, everyone.